There is a challenge over on Fire Pigeon's Discord to make this look pretty. So I'm gonna show you manually on how I created this. We will cover material setup, also an add-on with a huge material library to kind of make things go faster. Adding junk, create a story, and give it a little bit of post-processing. So let's jump into it. So first thing off the bat is I'm going to texture this building here manually. Now there's various sites where you can get royalty free images. I use Pexels, sometimes I use textures.com, but what I'm gonna do is start off with this brick wall, download, now these are all royalty free, so you can go to your heart's desire. Next thing I wanna do is just create a normal map, displacement map, ambient inclusion and specularity, and you can download all these. This is another website that can help you out, and there is a link in the description for this. This is for free. So back in Blender, let's go ahead and create our shader. I'm just gonna copy this material and we'll call this brick wall. And now let's go ahead and throw our image in. We can see that the UV unwrapping is completely wrong. However, if you go tab into edit mode, press A to select everything U for UV unwrapping. Let's go cubic projection. And you can see that is looking a lot better. However, the bricks are still quite large. We can jump over into UV editing, but I think I might just make this window my UV editor. Let's go up here into the top left and change it to UV editor. So if you have a look here, select everything with A. I'm gonna press S to scale and just bring it out. Mm, that seems pretty good. Let's press zero. And to me, that's not too bad. It seems like the bricks are still a little bit big, so we might just zoom out some more. I am fairly happy with that size. From here, let's just press tab to go into object mode. I'm going to shift D and duplicate the image texture. Let's open our texture and ambient occlusion. And we're just gonna give a little bit of extra detail. Let's put in a mix RGB, throw that one there into here, and we'll change this to multiply. The other thing as well is with the color space, we're gonna change that to non-color. From here, shift D, let's duplicate that one, open it up, let's put in our specularity and we'll plug that into our specularity. Color space, once again, it will be non-color. Shift D for our last time, let's open it up, a normal map, shift A to search and we're gonna type in a normal map, plug that into there, color goes into there, normal goes into normal. Strength, I'm actually gonna bring down to maybe 0.2. So it does have that ever so slight depth, which is quite nice. And so there we go, we've created a very quick shader. It's very simple, obviously we could do more to it, but if we kind of jump into rendered mode, we, mm, it looks nice. However, being the lazy person that I am, I'm just gonna select the building over here on the right, press N, and I'm using Extreme PBR Combo. So if you wanna pick this up, there is a link in the description for it. Let's go brick, classic brick. Massive library of bricks. Mm, this one here, 4K, add new. Once again, let's select everything. U, cubic projection, shading, everything selected. Let's scale that down just so it roughly looks the same. And then we go like that. We've added in a shader that is schmick. Now Extreme PVR combo comes with a wide rate of stuff. If you wanna pick it up, go nuts. From here, what I can do is just select our railing. Let's go into bricks. We'll change this to maybe a metal, maybe a rusty metal. Yeah, that one seems pretty good. Let's go add new on that one. Lovely. So what I'm gonna do now is just quickly use this and update a whole bunch of materials. Now the scene is still very barren. I do like the way it looks. However, it's a little bit too clean. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a grunge texture. So if I go file, import, images as planes, I'm going to add in these two grunge decals. I don't know where I've got them from. They've come from somewhere, but let's go ahead and start using them a bit. So from here, I'm just gonna move them down into my scene just so I can see them. And what I can do now is come up to the top here and snap to, I'm gonna go snap to face. And we're gonna click center and align target to rotation. So from here, what I can do now is go shift D to duplicate. I can hit control and it's gonna sit on the wall. Might have to move it out a smidgen. Now you can instantly see that we've added a little bit of grunge now to the scene. So we might just go a little bit more. And then from here, what we can do is kind of just edit the mesh, follow the lines and delete what we don't need. So I'm just gonna go something like that, like that. 
and obviously along this wall. And what we can do is select this, this, and this, delete face. And so you can kind of see how we've just added that little bit of extra detail. Now to me, it's a little bit thick. So let's go into shading. So what I do here is I add a color ramp in between the alpha of the image and the alpha of the principal shader. And then I kind of adjust those values. I stuffed up a little bit and put the color into the alpha where the alpha should have been in the alpha. And then here I lower the actual alpha settings of the black and white. And then we get that desired result. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that grunge texture and start applying it all around the scene. So here I'm doing the process just as before. And what I'm ultimately gonna do is just duplicate. Now with that, that's already looking a lot better. It's just giving that extra wear and tear to the scene. What I'm gonna do now is just grab our other one. Let's go control to snap, GZ, bring it up. And I'm just gonna start scaling this around and we're just gonna duplicate and just, you know, just start placing it in places. Now there still is a lot missing here. It's still very bland and I kind of want to start adding in extra objects. So I'm just going to use the digital set dressing add on link in the description. If you want to have a look at that. And we've just got kind of like a multiple pieces here that fit this kind of like rustic environment that we're going for. So what I'm going to do is select everything, control C. And from here, I'm just going to press control V to paste that in. And they've come into our world. Let's just put it into a new collection really quick. GZ, move it up. Now, because we've already got snapping enabled, actually let's just move that out of the way completely so the shadows aren't getting hit. We can start grabbing some pieces and we'll throw them around. So let's just start off with maybe this rubble piece. Uh, we'll go G, hold control. Let's just snap it to the ground, make it a little bit bigger. G to the Z, bring it down. Yeah, nice, look at that. Shift D, kind of just place it around a little bit here and there. Shift D, give it a bit of a rotation. It might scale that one down. We can start grabbing other items and I'm just gonna dump a few. What else could we do with these? Oh, pallets. G, hold control, snap them in place. Let's raise that up a little bit. And as you can see that it's just giving us a little bit of extra, a little bit extra to the scene. And now by adding all those wonderful little pieces, you can see that it's really brought the scene even more together. From here, what I might do is just add in a cube, something like this. Let's increase the size a smidgen to about there. What I'm going to do is kind of create a bit of a, uh, a little bit of a fog effect. So let's go into new and this one will be our uh, dust. Let's kill that one. Add in a principal of volume. Thank you. Throw that one into the volume and you can see that we've got really thick blob, I guess. Density will change to maybe 0.02. And now you can kind of see that we have that extra depth to the scene. Now, as much as I really like what I've created, I'm more than happy to stop here. It does need that story. What's, what's the point? of this what is my eye looking at because at the moment i'm looking down the back of an alley that is empty so what i'm going to do is i'm probably just going to add in two characters let's jump over to character creator 3 and quickly create two characters now because he's going to be far away i'm not too concerned about what he's going to actually look like so we'll have this character and then we'll have this character in only two or three minutes We've created two really good characters. This is character creator three. If you want to check it out, there is a link in the description for this as well. Let's now go ahead and import our two characters. And now we've brought them into the scene. So let's just quickly pose them. But because they've come in like this, I'm going to use auto rig pro quick rig just to quickly set them up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let's go quick rig. Sure, buddy. Just so we've got all the controls that we can quickly manipulate this character rather than going through in each individual bone. Now you can see that we've got the IK all set up, which just makes life a lot easier. So here I quickly posed them and I threw them into the back of the scene, the back of the alley. And with a super quick preview, this is what we're looking at, but it just needs that little bit more. So from here, we go into the compositor. We add in a brightness and contrast and just change them a little bit of the values, just to give it a little bit more of a darker scene. Then we go ahead and add in an elliptical mask and increase the scale of it. 
Then we add in a blur node to soften those edges, obviously change it to Gaussian, yeah, and increase the pixel rate. Add a mix node in, combine the two images, change the mix to a multiplier, and that'll fix everything and we get a really nice result. <laughs> And there we have it, the final result. Obviously, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this video.